Okay, I think we'll uh, reconvene. And the next item on the agenda, agenda is item three. This item is to allow evidence taking on the Criminal Legal Aid Fixed Payments Scotland Amendment Regulations 2011, which is a negative instrument and therefore subject to annulment. A motion recommending annulment has been lodged by James Kelly, MSP. For now, the committee is taking evidence in order to inform the next agenda item under which the motion to annul will be considered. Members have copies of the cover note and written submissions received in relation to this instrument, which can be found at papers two to six. And we have two um, panel sessions this morning. Um, the first panel I would like to welcome from the Law Society of Scotland, Michael Clancy, who is the Director of, Legal, sorry, Director of Law Reform, and Andrew Alexander, who is the Secretary of the Legal Aid Negotiating Team, together with, from the Glasgow Bar Association, um, David O'Hagan, who is the past President, and Jerry Sweeney, who is the committee member. I would like to um, welcome you all this morning. Good morning. Um, I'm going to invite questions from the members of the committee. Mr Kelly. Okay. Thanks a lot, Convener. Um, can I first of all put a couple of questions to the, the representatives from the Glasgow Bar Association? Um, in terms of the, the issue at stake here uh, in relation to the uh, stipendiary fees, um, it has been put to the committee in submissions that the bulk of these cases that are, um, that are um, heard by the stipendiary magistrates' court um, would, in actual fact, uh, you know, be, be logical, logically placed within the Justice of the Peace Court. I wonder what your, uh, your response is to, to those suggestions to us. Um, good morning. Uh, can I firstly thank the, the committee for the invitation, uh, myself and Mr Sweeney, uh, and on behalf of the GBA for uh, the opportunity to speak to you this morning, uh, and also uh, extend thanks to Mr Kelly for, for putting forward this motion. Um, I would direct you um, to the, the GBA submission, and in particular Appendix H, which is the letter from Leslie Thompson, who is the, the Procurator Fiscal for Glasgow. Um, I think the first point to make in relation to this is that given that uh, discussions began in November of last year between the Law Society, the Government and the Legal Aid Board, that no one saw fit to consult with Leslie Thompson uh, up until, as I understand it, yesterday um, the Law Society and the Scottish Government contacted Leslie Thompson for her view on the cases that go into the Stipendiary Magistrates Court. The, the first pe people that contacted her were the GBA uh, on the 9th of March, and her response to the GBA is contained in Appendix H, and it's made quite clear by her that when she marks cases or when her deputies mark cases in the stipend or for the stipendiary magistrate court, they are cases that would otherwise be in the sheriff court. If it was a justice of the peace court, it would be a justice of the peace court case, it will be marked to go into the justice of the peace court. And she makes that abundantly clear in her letter. Uh, I don't know whether the committee have received the briefing um, which Leslie Thompson uh, thereafter provided to the Scottish Government and the Law Society yesterday. So the member should have received um, as item 30 on, in, your, in, in, in your papers, which was handed round a short time ago. Could I, could I just put on, on, on the record, so that we do have some sense in this discussion, that I have quite literally taken possession of this document we all have. two we all have. or three minutes ago, and I'm struggling to find time to read it while we're actually asking questions. So I think it's going to be fair to say that we're not going to be proceeding on the basis that we have understood this document. And I think that highlights my point in relation to the GBA take the view that there has been a real lack of consultation, in particular with the Procurator Fiscal, who is perhaps the most important person and the most significant person in terms of giving her view as to what cases go into the Stipendiary Magistrates Court. And as I say, it was provided with the G or to the GBA that it's quite clear in her view from that letter that she only puts Sheriff Court cases into the Stipendiary Magistrates Court. Um, there are exceptions in terms of the custody court, which deals with um, all matters, whether it be justice of the peace or stipendiary magistrate court cases, uh, and also from time to time certain trial matters will be put 
from the Justice of the Peace Court into the Stipendiary Magistrate Court. But the, the matter, that, uh, that particular issue, the committee must bear in mind that has no impact whatsoever on legal aid fees. This is a matter that the Law Society in their submission seem to completely misunderstand. Legal aid re regulations say that if it's a stipendiary magistrate case, you get paid the stipendiary magistrate rate. If it is set down for the Justice of the Peace Court, and that comes back to the Procurator Fiscal's marking of the case, if it's marked down as a Justice of the Peace Court, even if at any point during proceedings, whether it be in the custody court or whether the trial is moved there, the legal aid payment remains the same as the Justice of the Peace Court. So there is no interaction between the legal aid payments. And I think that's an important matter for the committee to bear in mind that the, the, the fiscal says these are stipendiary magistrate cases that go into the sheriff court ordinarily in any other jurisdiction. She's quite clear about that. Um, and that does not affect legal aid payments. Um, and it leads to misleading statistics, but it doesn't affect the legal aid payments to Glasgow solicitors. Any other questions? I wonder if the Law Society wanted to respond to the points that were made regarding the Law Society's submission. Uh, th thank you again to the members of the committee for the invitation to uh, address you on this topic today. Uh, I think that it's clear from our submission that, uh, yes, and clear also from the, uh, the letter from Leslie Thompson at uh, Crown Office that uh, she does say that uh, she would wish cases that if there was no step to go into the Sheriff Court but also she does note that uh, more sensitive or more complex cases will generally go towards the Sheriff Court rather than the Stip Court where there's the choice of it. For instance, there are presumptions as part of Crown Office's policy that certain offences, offences of racially aggravated behaviour, hate crimes, domestic abuse and knife crime should be prosecuted in the uh, Sheriff Court. Um, obviously, the Sheriff Court fixed fee is paid to solicitors for proceedings in the Sheriff Court, and that is a rough average as to the complexity and seriousness of the cases which go before that court. I think that part of the Law Society's case in this particular uh, issue is that the cases that are going before the stipendiary court are generally less serious and less complex, and so would legitimately attract a slightly lower fee on average. Kelly. Thanks, Convener. I do have a, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, just in relation to obviously what's been proposed here in, in, in terms of the stipendiary magistrates court is a reduction of the fee from £515 to £390. Um, can I again ask the Glasgow Bar Association representatives what uh, impact that reduction will have on Glasgow law firms and also on the ability of accused persons to you know, up access uh, appropriate representation? Well, it is a, a, a well-established principle of law that similar cases should be treated alike, both within the Glasgow jurisdiction and in relation to the Glasgow jurisdiction and elsewhere. If this uh, regulation is passed, it will mean that there is a differential of treatment in relation to the same type of case within the stipendiary magistrate court as against the Glasgow Sheriff Court. It will also mean that there is a differential of treatment in relation to the treatment of the stipendiary magistrate case and a similar case in a sheriff court out with the Glasgow jurisdiction. Now, that immediately, as it were, flows against the generality of the principle. The effect that it would have upon individual cases and upon individual providers of legal assistance, in my view, would be very significant. It would be significant in relation to the competitiveness of the independent uh, provider, and I say independent from government, independent from PDSO, provider of legal services. They shall come under strain. That strain in the uh, system of fixed fees is supposed to operate on a swings and roundabouts basis. In other words, when fixed fees came into being in 1999, it was a judge that some cases would be overvalued and some cases would be undervalued, but the aggregate would provide a reasonable remuneration in relation to all cases across the base. If, however, Glasgow firms 
are arbitrarily targeted in relation to a large proportion of the cases which they deal with being very substantially, and these are not minor reductions, but being very substantially reduced in the funding, that reduction in funding must, under the system, not only affect the particular case before the stipendiary magistrate, but necessarily, given the system, have an effect transferred to other cases, not within the stipendiary magistrate system, sheriff court cases, solemn court cases, because the firm itself will come under strain. And I think that is, is something which is perhaps either not mentioned at all or easily lost in relation to counter-representations before you today. Okay, uh, just one final question, convener. Um, I think the, the issue at stake in all this, uh, you know, what's brought it forward is the, the savings that have got to be uh, arrived at, and uh, you know, no one's disagreeing that there's got to be savings in terms of the budget. Um, I think the issue suggested in the SSI is how that is achieved. Um, now, the, the specific pro proposal in terms of the cuts in stipendiary magistrate fee court fees uh, saves 398,000 in 11, 12, and 652,000 uh, the following year. And uh, obviously, if, if that's not to go ahead, there needs to be an. I acknowledge that there needs to be an alternative as to how we find uh, those savings. Now, in your submission, you state that a cut of uh, five pounds to the core fee uh, would achieve the same saving. Um, can you perhaps expand on that? Yes. Obviously, what we're dealing with is the principle of proportionality and the principles of equity. And what we're basically saying is that in the GBA, as elsewhere, we agree that in these straightened times, there has to be a readjustment of funding. We accept that. But what we're also saying is that there has to be an equity in the system. There has to be an equity in relation to the necessary reductions. An equity in the necessary reductions can be achieved by a further £5 reduction across the base as far as sheriff court and stipendiary magistrate cases are concerned. Now, the £5 reduction would equate to something somewhat less than 1% of the overall core fee. Now, our view is that that would be more equitable across the Scottish jurisdiction rather than simply targeting the Glasgow jurisdiction and perhaps throwing up certain uh, convention uh, discords within particular cases and certainly within the Glasgow jurisdiction. But, Convener, can I just ask, yeah, very briefly, can I just ask the Law Society um, not as to whether they agree with that approach, but whether that is accurate, that a £5 cut to the core fee would achieve the, the same savings as the reductions to the, the, in, the, in the fees in the stipendiary magistrates' court. Thank you. Um, in terms of the, the, the fee itself, at uh, a £398,000 saving in 2011-12, uh, uh, that would work out to be a... Um, 2.1% cut uh, to the fees paid to Glasgow solicitors uh, taking the 2009-2010 figure. Um, in terms of the um, likely savings that would be required to the core fee if um, you were in a situation in which you uh, didn't go ahead with the cut to the stipendiary fee, the figures that we were provided with by government and by Scottish Legal Aid Board suggested that the core fee would have to be reduced to £459 rather than the uh, 400 and the, uh, the other issue, of course, is that, that these regulations, um, if they're not passed as, as stands today, we would be in the situation in which it would be very difficult to bring regulations forward in time uh, in order to avoid um, the deeper cuts, uh, because obviously with the financial year starting on the 1st of April, uh, we're in a situation in which, you know, sort of if cuts can't be made at this stage, then the cuts would be, you know, sort of proportionately deeper, you know, sort of the further on in that financial year that we went. I think it's, going to be a, it's, it's, it's also important to, to acknowledge uh, what Mr. Sweeney said about the, the swings and roundabouts issue. Um, and uh, the, the case law on this is quite clear that that, that was 
uh, the anticipation in 1999. And I think um, even with the changes which uh, these orders uh, propose for the uh, fixed payment regime, uh, the swings and roundabout uh, uh, argument still holds good. And, uh, you know, in, in the leading case on this, uh, where uh, uh, the solicitors who represented uh, uh, Norman McLean and Peter McLean were referred to as being extremely experienced and well-respected solicitors, uh, and one of them is sitting along uh, the, uh, the table from me today, um, it was quite noticeable that uh, uh, a solicitor acting under the fixed payment regime was expected to take the rough with the smooth, uh, and that uh, is part of the, the theory behind the fixed payment regime. Um, it, so therefore, this is, this is not new, uh, and it will continue e even within the constraints uh, of the uh, fixed payment regime as amended. Thank you. Um, members, we're very, very tight for time, so if you could keep your questions as, as brief as possible, that would be very, very helpful. Um, Robert Brown, followed by Stuart Maxwell. Thank you very much, Convener. I want to be absolutely clear of the position here, because I think there's, there's two issues I want to bring, up, bring out. The first relates to the change from the current position. And I wonder if I can ask the Law Society, first of all, if I've got this right. The current block fee um, for the stipendiary magistrate appearances, the base fee, is £515. That's going down to £485 for Sheriff Court and is going down to 390 Indeed, it would have gone down to 340 under the original proposal for the STIP. That is correct, except that it would have gone down, I think, to 350 under the original proposals, okay. uh, and it was in uh, mm -hmm. uh, discussions between the Cabinet Secretary and the Law Society that it was increased to 390 now, regardless of anything else, at the moment, the STIP court and the sheriff court appearance are dealt with on the same basis, so that for people appearing in the STIP court, there's um, an immediate loss of £125 in the block. Um, now, that means on anybody's account, there's a disproportionate um, loss to mainly Glasgow solicitors appearing before the STIP court. Would you accept that as being the reality of the position before we look at whether that's justified? We, uh, well, Andrew, I think you've got something to say. Uh, yes, I mean, in, in terms of the cut, it is a, a substantial cut to the, the current position where there is equity between the Sheriff Court and between the Stipendiary Magistrate Court. Uh, however, I think that, that on the evidence uh, that is in the submissions, you'll see that there are a number of cases that, uh, that don't go before the uh, Stipendiary Court um, because of the complexity and seriousness. And I think that our belief is, is that averaging out the, the payments on the basis of the, the seriousness and complexity of the cases, um, that this would be uh, appropriate remuneration. Now, I want to examine that a bit further because the, 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 the key thing is really the clarity of what they actually do. Now, if I understand this right, cases come forward either as custody cases or as cited cases. In either event, in the instance of Glasgow, um, at, at the sort of um, um, at, the, at the lowest level, they would be marked in the first instance, if appropriate, as JP cases, and they would go to the JP court. Would that be correct with the nuance that if they were in custody, they would appear before the stipendiary magistrate to avoid having a separate custody court? That's our yeah. understanding. Yeah, we've agreed on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, thereafter, you, you look higher up the scale, and you're dealing, if, if, if the procurator fiscal in Glasgow's statement is correct, that those cases which are marked for the stipendiary magistrate's court in Glasgow are cases which would in other jurisdictions be in the sheriff court um, um, elsewhere. So that seems to me to mean that the, the other cases other than the sort of custody appearance would be ones going to the stipendiary court There would only be the kind of cases which would otherwise be in the sheriff court. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. In terms of the, the distinctions between you know, sort of, uh, JP and STIP and, Step and Sheriff, uh, while there is no you know, sort of precise science to the marking of these cases, that, that is correct, yes. Okay, and, and the final point in connection with that, therefore, is that the only distinction that the Law Society are relying on here is that certain of the more serious cases, because of Crown Office policy, don't get marked for going to the stipendiary court, we go to the sheriff court in Glasgow, nevertheless. They're all sheriff court cases and stip case, stip court. We don't get quite all of them because of these rather more serious cases occasionally. Yes. And it also has to be borne in mind that Glasgow has a very much higher proportion of serious cases than any other jurisdiction. And we are talking about, in the Glasgow jurisdiction, at least until very, very recently, the busiest criminal court in Europe so there is a weighted bunch, as it were, of cases which are very serious. Final point, Convener, if I may, just, just on the question of the type of case. 
have been sent by one of the solicitors involved an example of a case which went to the Sheriff Court in Eyre. Now, that's obviously not a Glasgow case, and this was a case which involved the stealing of a pot of yogurt and a jar of honey. So it does rather appear that, at least in some jurisdictions, the kind of cases that go to the Sheriff Court maybe wouldn't qualify entirely as being the kind of hugely serious sort of cases that would otherwise go. They sound like JP cases, dare I suggest that, to the Law Society. Of course, uh, there, there will be variations across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what is serious in one place may be considered uh, not so serious in another. Um, uh, you know, uh, um, there may be a breach. You've suggested a pot of yogurt and a jar of honey in any jurisdiction in Scotland would regard as the most serious of criminal cases coming before the court. Indeed not, but um, uh, as recently as yesterday I saw uh, cases in the Stipendry Magistrates Court and in the GP Court in Glasgow uh, which would not have uh, counted as being extremely serious. Um, uh, there was a, a case of a, a young man uh, who had head-butted a police officer. Now that, by all accounts, is a serious case. But it was in the GP Court in Glasgow um, uh, there was a case of a man who had to lose his licence uh, for uh, a, a tra traffic violation um, uh, and uh, because he lost his licence he would lose his job. That similarly was being treated in the JP court in Glasgow. Uh, at the same time, or rather an hour and a half beforehand, in the Stipendry Magistrate Court in Glasgow, uh, there was an instance where a, a woman had uh, broken the finger of a police officer when being uh, handcuffed. That was being treated in the Stipendry Magistrate Court. So, uh, you know, serious cases uh, uh, can be viewed through different prisms. Uh, and whilst I don't know uh, what the, uh, the ratio of honey theft in Scotland is, um, uh, but uh, clearly in certain parts of the country, um, uh, public uh, disturbance, breaches of the peace, uh, are a nightly occurrence uh, down in the Cowgate there. Um, uh, but... Uh, in uh, other parts of the country, they may be very rare occurrences. Uh, and I don't think that, uh, that we, can, we can simply judge uh, by uh, periodic um, specific cases being drawn to our attention that this is indicative of a widespread trend. Question. Uh, obviously, the, the kind of crucial point here is, you know, the, the, the status of the courts, and, and that's going to be quite crucial in deciding where we go in terms of the fees. I, I'm looking at the executive note to, to the SI, which shows that the categories in which the stipendiary courts closer and shared to the GB was 64%, um, closer to the sheriff, 11%, and 24%, where there was no clear pattern. And I'm also looking at uh, information that says uh, percentage of business dealt GB courts outside Glasgow under the case categories of assault, theft and breach of the peace are very similar to percentages of work done under these categories in the stipendiary magistrates court. And so it goes on. And there's also evidence from the Law Society about um, similar sort of cases and, and so on. So I'm really keen to try and tease out just what this status is uh, and, and just how the stipendiary court does relate because it would appear that there's quite a lot of information and evidence here that would appear to show that it is somewhere between the JP Court and the Sheriff Court. I wonder um, if I refer you to Appendix B, which was provided in the GBA uh, submission, um, even a cursory look at that maybe gives you an indication that the, the premise that in some way that there are less complex cases 